Game Tech back with yet another graphic settings explainer, and based on a number of comments from our previous videos, we figured that ambient occlusion would be best to dive into next. So we have anti-aliasing to get rid of jaggies, and isotropic filtering to clean up them textures, but your game still may look a little flat. Well, let's bring ambient occlusion out of the shadows to show you what it does. Before we go any further, hit that subscribe button to keep up with Game Tech here at GameSpot. Ambient occlusion is a calculation of how much an object or surface is blocked from environmental light sources. It accounts for everything around these objects and their position relative to each other and where the ambient light comes from. It then simulates where light should not be present. Thus, crevices and corners where light technically doesn't reach are darkened. The result? Shadowing that adds a richer and more realistic look to the overall environment. It creates more depth to an otherwise flat picture. Here's what I mean. Pay close attention to the spaces around the water jugs, the corners of the shelving unit, the items stored on those shelves, and where the wall meets the floor. With ambient occlusion, you'll notice that the shadows around these objects are more lifelike and add more depth to the environment. Ambient occlusion isn't true shadow rendering or tied to the shadow settings in your games, but it's much more efficient than global illumination, which would analyze each pixel and light source to create the shadowy effect. However, ambient occlusion can still be taxing on your hardware. Now, there are a few different methods of how ambient occlusion is done. We'll go through the most common ones in games, but it all started with the perennial first-person shooter that pushed PCs to their limits a decade ago. Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, or SSAO, was first introduced with the original Crysis from Crytek that used the Cry Engine. It's the basic level of ambient occlusion, darkening areas that are blocked from the environmental light source. These shadows are represented at half resolution, so it's not as detailed as it could be. Still, it was advanced for its time. Horizon-based ambient occlusion, or HBAO, from NVIDIA, and high-definition ambient occlusion, or HDAO, from AMD, takes things to the next level. It increases the number of samples used when calculating the areas that should be darkened, and renders at full resolution for a more accurate representation of ambient occlusion. But as a result, it's even more taxing on your system. HBAO Plus is an advanced version of regular HBAO that you'll see in more modern games, since it's a more efficient form. Again, the number of samples used to create the shadows is increased, while generally having less of a performance impact than old HBAO. It's still more demanding than SSAO. Voxel Accelerated Ambient Occlusion, or VXAO, is the most advanced form today, and it's very performance heavy. NVIDIA says it's about three to four times slower than HBAO+, but it doesn't make any graphical compromises, and it looks amazing. It affects larger portions of the game's environment and accounts for objects that aren't necessarily in view, but would contribute to ambient occlusion anyway. It's still in its early stages, but it can be seen in Unreal Engine 4 with Rise of the Tomb Raider. I would highly recommend using some form of ambient occlusion if you can afford the processing power. Its overall impact on the visual appeal of a game is strongly felt, but it also depends on what you're playing. Maybe a fast-paced shooter where frame rate matters most doesn't need it. But an immersive sim like Prey or Dishonored 2, where you're carefully inspecting the environment, will look much more believable with ambient occlusion. And as always, make sure your system can run these settings just fine. This was the fourth in a series of PC graphics settings explainers, so I want to ask you what we should demonstrate next. So hit up those comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.